All right, we're here at my urban worm bag, and in this video, we are going to harvest this urban worm bag for the very first time. It has been running for about six months. It's July now, and we started it in January, so it's been a while since we started it, but hopefully after filling it and getting this first harvest done, we're gonna be able to do harvest either every couple of weeks or at least once a month. So I've taken those water bottles out because we are still having issues. If you saw my last video, we had a whole pumpkin in here, and it really generated a lot of heat in this bin and unfortunately I'm finding that it probably wasn't just the pumpkin but the fact that this is outside of my back porch in the summer in Florida. So one of the things I'm noticing besides a bunch of worms right here is we've got quite a bit of mites right here where the water bottle was. They certainly are attracted to the moisture and the reason we're starting off inside the bin and not underneath it to harvest it is Steve over at the Urban Worm Company said that the best thing to do is give a feeding on the top here to try and attract the worms up and then a couple days later go ahead and harvest so that's what we're gonna do so just because I'm curious we're gonna dive in here and right below the surface is lurking a lot of worms that is good I'm very happy about that and in this bin there are both red wigglers and blue worms and I was a little worried that maybe we'd only have the blue worms because they're more tropical worm but look right here this is a red wiggler see the clitellum right there it is bulging and it's not in line with the rest of the worm and we should see an orange tail and sure enough there is the orange tail of a red wiggler. So both of them are surviving in here despite the really bad heat that we've been having. So let's just kind of search around and see what we can find in here. And the last time we were in here, we fed them lots of strawberry tops, a banana peel, some apple cores, and broccoli. But it was kind of a tiny feeding because we wanted to make sure that they could get through the rest of that whole pumpkin that we had in here. We also had a lot of avocado shells. And they always seem to like to hide in there. We've got a couple in there, so that's good. But let's keep digging around. I'm not going to dig too deep. I'm just going to get the surface a little bit just to check on that last feeding, make sure they've gotten rid of it. And it's been 19 days since we were in here, so I don't expect to find too much. And it has actually been 169 days since we started this thing. It is almost six months, so this is a good time to harvest. They say between four months and six months for your first harvest. And then after that, hopefully we're going to be harvesting a lot sooner. Lots of great worms in here. I love seeing this. And the castings are looking good too, and we are kind of right on the surface so I expect when we get down to the harvest that maybe we'll have a lot of castings but if not we'll just dump it on top so in we go with some fresh cardboard a little bit of paper shredded bedding I've got a great shredder and I've got Amazon links if you're interested in that they create really tiny shreds for me it's a 12 sheet cross cut micro shredder so you want both the cross cut and the micro portion of it to get these really small pieces and then if you've been watching my videos you know I like to freeze all my food and then we put it in. I let it thaw out for a little bit, but this stuff has been sitting out all day. So it is pretty limp and a lot of the moisture has come out of it. So within this bucket, there is a lot of liquid. We'll show you at the end. So what I'm going to do is kind of do my whole feeding and then we'll dump the liquid on top because we are putting a lot of dry bedding. Now, anytime you feed, you want to add bedding also. And by volume, you want to go somewhere around one part food and three parts bedding. So the biggest thing that you're going to put in here is bedding when you are feeding your worm bins. And then I've got a little situation going on here. These things are great, just strawberry containers and you know, they've got venting and stuff, so that's great. So lots of great food in there. But the problem is when you thaw it out, if you leave it for, you know, much more than half an hour, it all drains out. So I'll show you what happened there. It really was just not a good situation. So I put it on this plate that you see down there in order to catch the liquid, which works unless you leave it all day and then you get that much liquid. So we'll put that on later. So let's go ahead and spread this around. It's just some blueberries, got some apple cores, lots of lettuce, which is good. This is the most gnarly potato that I can imagine. And we've got some banana peels, that kind of thing. So we'll just kind of spread this around, not trying to create any hot compost or any concentrations of one food here or there, but just kind of dumping it in. And now let's go ahead and add a lot more bedding. Strike that, reverse it, we forgot amendments. So we'll just dump in some of our worm chow, which for me is just expired grains from my pantry. Unfortunately, I have 
have a lot of it, so in it goes. Then I am both a coffee and tea drinker, so we like to have our morning coffee, and I use the spent coffee grounds as just another food source for them. And then here is the grit. This is some pulverized eggshells, and I'm going to tell you something. It is magic. I just discovered how much the worms absolutely love it. I'm doing a time lapse in my vermi hut, and I put a pile of grit in there from these pulverized eggshells, and that is the first thing they attack before watermelon, before cantaloupe, before pumpkin. All right, so that looks fantastic. Let's go ahead and put more bedding on top. And then let me see if we can cover it with just this bedding. Not quite. So we're going to go in with some more from the actual shredder container. Perfect. So there we go. I think we've been needing bedding in here anyway. Got some more odds and ends bedding. And the last thing I'm going to do is we have been saving our paper towels and napkins to put in our worm bin. And I kind of want to spread it out. But again, this is my one worm bin that I'm kind of treating like a trash compactor. So I don't mind this going on top like this. It's not like they're going to get to it right away. But certainly when I put the water bottles in, things like that, it can go right on top of here. And if the mites like to jump up here, if there's a huge population boom, then I can just take those paper towels out and throw them out. So let's keep adding these in here. And now I'm going to add some of that liquid from the frozen veggies and food scraps that we had. A little bit more on the plate and then some more from this little container right here. So this should entice them up. And now let's get to the harvest. Ready, set, two days later. Well, it's been four days. And one of the things they tell you to do is kind of give this some pats to try and loosen up what's in there. So we're just gonna go around and do that. It's my first time, I have no idea if that's enough, but it feels really compacted down there. So let's get underneath. So in order to give you a good angle, I'm laying on my side in order to get under here. I think I could sit on my rear end and do this, but we are pretty low to the ground here. So if you a mobility challenge, this could be an issue. Now, this right here is a cord and it just comes loose. So I'm going to go ahead and take this part off right here. And it's got a little button I pull down and I'm going to make that loose. I've never done this before, so I don't know how it's going to go. And I pulled it tight. So now I'm just kind of widening that and let's see this is what's initially coming out and now i'm just going to kind of push it with my fingers and it feels really moist oh my gosh really moist we've got some cardboard coming out which we had put down when we first put this together six months ago so let me just kind of come in here and get out what i can and then we'll take a look at the harvest i already see one worm there and let me kind of get some more it's really easy to get out for my first harvest so pretty happy with that that. Let me spread it out and it's a lot. <laughs> I've got this little seed starter kit container and it is pulling a lot out so that's no problem. And so far I haven't, my fingers are up kind of where this tan part is. So I'm just getting stuff right here out of this blue bladder. So let me keep going. It doesn't feel too bad. It's not too warm and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another one of these to finish this off. I guess my first lesson is be prepared because there could be a lot of stuff coming out of here. Now I'm up maybe an inch past this tan part here and I'm getting to one of the things I wanted to take out of here and that is this sensor for temperature because its batteries have run real low. So we're going to take care of that. This over here, she'll take it out. Now luckily I have my blue tarp under here so I'm not worried about the castings that are going just past it but I'm getting much of the same type of castings out I think and let's just do a little bit more and then I think we'll be done. There we go, we got the other one as well. I think that is all we're gonna do. So now I'm just gonna kind of uh, shake this out a little bit and I'm gonna tighten this part right back up because I wanna set it up for our next harvest, which I'm gonna do a lot sooner. I will probably be in here in maybe another month to harvest this again. Now this right here is the piece that goes underneath it. I have not been putting this on because I just want to see if there's any drippage, that kind of thing underneath. And I don't want to keep taking the Velcro off and unbuckling it. So totally optional, but it does come with a bottom if you want to put that on right after you were done harvesting. So let me clean up in here and let's go up top and see how our castings look.
So here's what we got, and it doesn't look too bad at all. One of the things we noticed, there were a lot of worms in here, and it's very, very moist. So that is going to be common if you have a lot of moisture going down there. And as you keep harvesting, I think what they said is that you'll find less worms, especially if you're just using the moisture of the food in order to keep your bin moist in general. So let me go ahead and dump this out. This is just a small portion of what we found, and let's go through it a little bit. So initially I found some of the newspaper and stuff that we had lined the bottom of, so that's not too unexpected. And we did put some, well, we got a lot of lightning and thunder. We did put some shredded cardboard right down there, so that was probably compacted and they didn't get to it. But after that, lots of castings from all the food scraps and all the other bedding that we put in here. So I was pretty impressed with what we saw. And if I really needed to, I could probably let this dry out a little bit and then sift it and use the castings, but I don't need them. And I want the worms to keep working in here and I don't want to bother with separating them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this first harvest right back up here on top. So let me get the rest of it. So in we go with the first tray that we did. Let me just kind of get everything out of it. This will be the last time that I use these. I'm going to use something a lot less flimsy because it was a little difficult. Let's take that camera out. And when we did that harvest, we got 15 pounds even as far as the amount of castings that we got. And let me tell you, I feel like I barely took anything out of here. So I believe that this bag is going to be an absolute workhorse for me, just like my outdoor bin is. And check out the beautiful worms that are all inside there. I am very excited. So what we're going to do is just kind of leave this layer here. You know, we fed it, then we put the paper towels, and now we've got this. And I'm just going to keep going. I am I'm going to put the temperature sensors back in, but I'll do that after I'm done. So I hope you've enjoyed this first harvest video. Go and ask me any questions that you have in the comments because I, another lightning. Because I may have forgot of half of what I was going to say. The one thing I do want to tell you is you could put this up on blocks and just maintain it like that because right now I'm severely bent over with this thing. And if I had put blocks up, it'd be easier for me to deal with it while I'm standing from the top and when I'm harvesting. So I hope you're all having a great day. I hope your worm bins are doing fantastic. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.